Okay, so unfortunately the video was uh, corrupted again, and so I'm recording it again. Um, so as I uh, mentioned in the last video, so this patient, um, uh, this cerebral uh, part here through this coronal cut is now uh, seen in white, and uh, here is uh, what the uh, patient is described. So uh, according to the doctor, uh, when uh, at the time of assessment, uh, she was assessed as a mildly uh, mentally impaired and medium, uh, he, she demonstrated some medium uh, motor deficits and uh, these CT scans and also MRI uh, shows a complete absence of the cerebellum. And these deficits are uh, mostly due to the fact that the cerebellum uh, is controlling the exquisite uh, timing of the motor co uh, coordination and also lang including language, verbal communication, okay? And this particular person uh, was uh, at the time of the admission or the uh, examination of this paper, um, she was 24 years old and uh, she was admitted to hospital um, primarily because of the complaint of the dizziness and also inability to walk steadily. And it's been going for 20 years and she was always feeling like, you know, something is wrong compared to other people. But in particular, uh, last uh, one month or so, uh, she had some uh, feeling of nausea and vomiting. And that was the primary reason to come to the um, hospital. And then basically, she was diagnosed as uh, lacking the cerebellum at that time. It was very surprising to both doctors and also, you know, um, uh, herself. And uh, uh, this is also, uh, you know, in a sense, you know, uh, very surprising because she was already at the time uh, married and also she had a daughter and um, the pregnancy and delivery were all, you know, um, normal pretty much. But uh, according to her mother, uh, she was uh, showing some abnormality. Uh, for example, you know, uh, since uh, four years old, she couldn't really stand uh, by herself. And also she didn't, um, she was not able to you know, walk uh, without any assistance at the age of seven. seven. But that's nothing uh, to uh, suspect that you know, this person has a uh, you know, uh, lacking uh, complete cerebellum, okay? Because um, this type of the motor delay is found in uh, many different types of the um, disease or uh, even within the normal uh, population. And this is a horizontal cut, including this, you know, um, cerebellum as a, a black uh, fluid in this case. And this part is the eye, okay. So uh, uh, her speech was not intelligible uh, until six years of age and she did not enter school at the time. So uh, as I said that the uh, um, cerebellum does control uh, motor coordination and especially the verbal report. And that's the reason why um, her speech was not so good at that time. And, but uh, over the age, uh, this kind of a difficulty was uh, compensated. And as a neurological examination revealed, uh, she could cooperate uh, and fully orient during the examination, meaning that um, she could com communicate without any uh, problem. And the verbal analysis test uh, revealed her word comprehension and expression remained intact and she had no sign of aphasia. Uh, Program of the language um, and so on. And also, uh, according to the doctors, um, her visual or auditory or you know, tactile touch sensation and so on uh, seem to be completely normal, uh, doesn't show any abnormalities. So, what this means is that the entire cerebellum here, back in the cortex, is irrelevant for consciousness. And uh, this is actually not really trivial. And uh, any theory of consciousness or any theory that tries to connect um, consciousness with the brain or world has to give a reasonable explanation of why this is the case, that you know, cerebellum is not relevant for consciousness. And it's not so trivial to explain this fact. And uh, especially this is not trivial because it's uh, highly related to higher level um, cognitive functions such as um, uh, you know, language and some motor coordination. Now to put this fact into perspective, uh, let's consider several numbers and facts and then coming back to why this in the cerebellum is not really relevant for consciousness. So uh, just to start, uh, if I ask uh, some of you that, uh, you know, uh, what generates consciousness in the brain? And then some of you probably will answer 
um, it's a complexity. And uh, this is a very naive, but also, you know, highly popular idea among the uh, physicists and also psychologists and uh, neuroscientists. Something that is um, complex must be underlining this complicated phenomenon of consciousness. You know, human brain is super complicated. Uh, as you know more, the more of the complexity is understood, okay? So, uh, to consider complexity, what uh, you first need to think about, you know, what is uh, composing uh, brains, our brains, okay? And as a start, let's consider how many brain uh, neurons are there inside of my, you know, brain, you know, skull. And it turns out, it uh, according to the recent count by the neuroanatomist, it is roughly 86 billion neurons. And you can remember this as a 10 to the 11, roughly. And by the way, these numbers are going to be important. And uh, I would uh, ask it, uh, ask you guys in the quiz. So you know, please pay attention. Okay. And then uh, each neuron is connected with other neurons through the hundred uh, thousand to ten thousand um, synapses. Okay, it's receiving a lots of uh, you know um, different inputs and also the uh, sending some. Um, information to other neurons of this order. And to uh, think about or to imagine how complicated this situation is, you can imagine uh, the following. So in 2020, there are 8 billion people on the planet of Earth. Um, the, you can imagine an Earth that is 10 times more dense, which is not so great for the COVID situation, but you know you can imagine that you know um you will encounter many more people even within melbourne okay and then uh if that situation each person communicates with other thousand to you know ten thousand people through let's say you know, direct communication or twitter or facebook or instagram or whatever then that's the level of the you know uh connectivity of the neurons inside of the brain and you can imagine this as a you know, uh, 86 uh, uh, billion people on the planet as a you know dot, and then each of the dot is connected with uh, other dots, uh, thousand to ten thousand dots, and then that is crumbled into all packed into you know the small you know uh, space in the brain. Okay, that's what's going on inside of your brain, and that's generating consciousness. However, this is an important point in our lecture right now that the uh, cerebral cortex that, you know, uh, is familiar, you know, uh, for you, contains only 15 billion neurons. And the rest of uh, roughly 70 billion neurons, uh, where? That's a question. And it turned out that the cerebellum contains 60 billion uh, neurons. This one to four ratio of cerebral cortex to cerebellum seems to be constant across the, um, phylogeny across animals, you know, the, to um, humans. And the, what, what does it mean is that the cerebellum uh, contains, you know, although, you know, in terms of volume here, um, it contains four times more neurons. And how it's possible is uh, as the following. The cerebral cortex here is uh, populated by many of the axons, uh, axonal connections, you know, uh, this part of the brain also communicates there and uh, there's a lots of wires and to make that wire uh, you know, efficient, there is a myelin structure that surrounds all these axons. And this type of the structure uh, is in a sense inefficient and uh, takes a lot of volume. On the other hand, cerebellum is extremely optimized and the wires are short and also you know, uh, small neurons compute uh, now things. And uh, as a result, even with a small, tightly packed, you know, space, it can contain uh, four times more neurons than cerebellum. And uh, uh, we do not lose consciousness, even if we lose this 80% of the neurons in the brain. Why is that? That's a question. And uh, in, uh, the, uh, also, you know, as I uh, mentioned in this particular person's uh, case, um, many of the uh, functions in the cerebellum can be um, compensated or um, recovered over the time, but it's not the case for the cerebrum, so, uh, cerebral cortex in some cases. 
And uh, one uh, particular example that um, happened relatively recently is that uh, the, there was a very famous Japanese singer who got um, uh, cancer in uh, cerebellum. And, uh, you know, after the age of probably like 30 or 40 uh, years old, and she, he had to cut uh, a part of the cerebellum. And then, because as I said, uh, cerebellum is, uh, you know, related to the timing and the coordination and so on. I thought that, you know, this uh, singer would never come back to the stage. But after several years of, uh, of rehabilitation and so on, he uh, became completely normal. And then now still, you know, uh, in, uh, is uh, playing at the, you know, top, uh, you know, uh, as a top singer in Japan. So uh, cerebellum, um, can be uh, lost even from the start of the life, but also can be lost after uh, you become uh, adult and then taken out, and still it doesn't impair consciousness. And both of them are quite um, substantial evidence that you know uh, cerebellum, uh, cerebellum is not really relevant for consciousness. Okay, and uh, we need a theoretical and principal uh, explanation. And one possible explanation is the theory that we will go into the detail. It was, uh, you know, next uh, weeks uh, of the lecture called the Integrated Information Theory, proposed by Giulio Tononi in uh, USA, uh, Wisconsin. And uh, roughly speaking, this Integrated Information Theory uh, suggests that uh, it is a particular type of the complexity that matters for consciousness. It's not only the connectivity itself uh, needs to be complicated in some way. And the way it has to be is that it's in an integrated way. So the cerebellum itself is connected with other neurons. Uh, you know, each of the neurons in cerebellum is connected with other neurons in a, a thousand uh, or 10,000 or even some, some of the big uh, cerebellum neurons are uh, called the Purkinje cells are uh, sometimes have a uh, synapses of to, uh, synapses with um, 100,000 neurons. So it is, in a sense, very, very complicated. However, each of the, to, to enable each of the computation related to the motor coordination of our you know, uh, communication, cerebellum uh, circuitry is, in a sense, more or less you know, parallel for each other, to each other. So one circuit is highly specialized to do the uh, timing of the motor coordination really optimum. And then another one is uh, optimized for uh, generating the verbal responses or you know, a language possible in some language. And the, another one is specialized in another thing. And each of these you know, uh, circuits are configured in a way that is uh, optimized within it, but do not talk or interfere with each other. And this type of computational architecture, according to integrated information theory, is not optimum to generate this uh, um, conscious experience. And that's how it goes. And uh, we will go into more detail of this theory towards the end of the uh, uh, lecture series. So in the next uh, video, I'm going to explain uh, the case of the lesion, brain lesions of the prefrontal cortex, uh, sometimes claimed as a seat of the executive function.